Okay, we're going to have a look at our last T in the series here. And the one we're going to look at today is a on-center oblique T. Okay, so this one is the, uh, the one that's on an angle, not perpendicular off the pipe. So we're going to draw this one uh, right now. So we'll start off with, again, a full front elevation and side elevation. Okay, so far I've got my front elevation, I've drawn my T at 45 degrees, projected over, I have my pipe sitting here. Now this is the only T, an oblique one, that we cannot get all our information from the end view. And you'll see as I project a, a line over, if we imagine that spinning towards us, again, let's look at this one, we're here, we have our oblique T here, and if I spin it in here, we lose the reference of how long our element lines are going to be. We don't have that anymore. So when we see them here, they are a true length, which they were in all the other T's we did. We used the front elevation. We could pick up our element lines from there, but we could shortcut it down to this view only. We also had a given seam height, the height that was consistent along the T that was the same above the peak of the pipe here. These ones are going to vary. They're all different. So this is the one T that we have to, we don't have a choice, we have to create the miter line and work from the front elevation. So what that means is as I project in here, my height doesn't matter in this view, okay? It, it, it again comes down to where the, t where the T is gonna hit the pipe and then those will come horizontally. But as far as where this is, it could be inside here, it could be way up here. It doesn't matter because they're going to hit the same spot on the pipe regardless. So I'm just going to project over from one peak of my point here. We do have a line of symmetry here, so we could cut off half it if we wanted to. I'm just going to keep going with the full view here. Now, this one again is on center, and when we have our on center tees, it will follow our pattern of over one, down one, and that will be on the pattern or the stretch out itself. It will also follow it here in the uh, miter view. So there's our miter line now established. I can number this one, but again, I'm going to shortcut a little bit. So now to our stretch out. And for our stretch out, I'm going to, uh, as always, I'm going to project my baseline from center of the pipe. And I'm going to run a vertical line just really long right now. And what I'm going to do to find my height of my blank size, I'm not going to calculate. Uh, I'm going to grab it right from my view here. So I'm going to come over and pick up line one. And you'll find that it may be line one, it may be line two, but I'm just going to see. I'm going to pick up one of them and check them all. And for my case, it's definitely line one that is the longest. It's pretty close to line two. They're almost exactly the same, but line one is a little bit longer. So I'm going to tick that off here because I know that's my longest line, or my long, longest element line here, that's going to be the maximum amount of material I'm going to require. And then we'll go there. I'm going to put my, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, I'm going to put my seam on the uh, number seven, because that's my shortest line. So we'll pick our short line to, to go there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label it seven, six, five, and down the number line. And then back up. Again, always starting, stopping at the same point. So now, now the process is just back to the same. I'm going to grab my 
corresponding point and get it transferred onto my stretch out. Coming from the top down, I'm going to pick up seven here and I'm going to swing it down. And I have two sevens in this case because I've only used that for numbering. And I'll go to six next. Six over here, and five. Remember, in two, it's a common error that we come in and we grab the profile height. That's not included. The T stops here. Okay, so I'm grabbing only to the top of the T. And that's five. Swing five down. Starting to see a pretty good drop there. Four, three, yeah, we said that two was close, so here we go, and then I knew one was my max. Here we go. So that's our pattern. Now again, uh, things we've talked about before, we know there's a change in direction here by the way it comes back together. So this will actually be going down on the other side. So we need to make sure that comes in ready to go down. Again, using a flexible curve, if you have one, we have magnets or um, the drafting equipment draw on that pattern. And then again, this is, our, this is our scrap here. So that's an oblique T. 